Hi, this is Bridget with Life on Spectrum, and I'm continuing the conversation about IEPs. To, for this episode, we're going to be talking about Section 4, State and Local Assessments. Now, depending on what state you're in, there should be some form of state assessments that all students are required to take. Some are at different levels or grade levels, others there are some every year. So just be aware that this section could depend on the grade level they're at and what state test they have to or not have to take. But remember, the IEP is for one complete year from the date of the meeting. So if you're having a meeting in April of this year and they have an assessment next November, the, that, the modifications and accommodations for that test in November should be included in the IEP when you have, meet in April. If not, you can always, like I said, reschedule an IEP and revise it as needed. So, but this is just something to keep in mind. Now with these state and local assessments, usually it's divided into three sections. The first one is the state assessments. The second one is ELL or ELA um, assessments. And the third one is local assessments. Now a lot of people don't understand the difference, so I'm gonna quickly go through it. The first one is the state assessments. Those are literally given by the state and usually are created by the state of edu the education department within your state and that is what they believe should be required of your student. The second one is ELL or ELA. If your son or daughter has a different language spoken primarily in the home, such as Spanish or Chinese or whatever the case may be, they may also have to be required to take English language, um, different state assessments every year. And the third one is local assessments. This one is where the gray area happens. Some districts um, actually do pre-tests to see how your son or daughter will do on these state or English language assessments. These pre-tests are considered local assessments. They're not considered the basic curriculum assessments. I just wanted to stress that. These local assessments are not the ones considered like the average test that your son or daughter may take every week. For instance, if they have a spelling test on every Friday, that is not a local assessment. So I just wanted to make sure you clar I clarified that. The other thing I wanna make sure you're aware of is the state assessments. Whatever accommodations or modifications you have for the state assessments, the English language, or the local assessments must be accommodations or modifications that they do on a regular basis within the classroom. For instance, if they generally have a test read to them on an everyday basis, then you can actually have that done for the state assessments also. However, if you just want that special accommodation or modification for the state assessment, it, we cannot do that because legally it has to show a pattern, I guess you would say, of what they actually typically receive in the classroom. So be aware of that, that your son or daughter can't get special privileges at the state assessment, but this is the section where we can make sure that the state is aware of the ones that they can receive because they're the ones that they usually receive on a daily basis. Hopefully that clarifies that up a little bit. I also wanted to take a second and describe the difference between uh, scribe and transcribe. If your son or daughter is having difficulty with writing skills, especially with um, mo their motor skills, you can actually have a scribe or a transcribe for these state assessments. The difference between it is a scribe is a person that will actually sit next to your son or daughter and actually write everything that they say to, to write. The one thing that is kind of difficult with that is they also have to tell them when to put a period and when to capitalize the next sentence. The other way that you could do it is a transcribe. A transcribe is when they're able to use their computer and all grammar checks and spelling checks are turned off, but they're allowed to sit there and type their written response. Afterwards, they print that off and a person will actually write in the test booklet what they typed out. So that's called transcribe. So I just wanted to make sure you understand the difference between scribe and transcribe for your son or daughter when it comes to state assessments. And with uh, upcoming episodes, I'll talk a little bit more about modifications and accommodations, but I just wanted to make sure that you are aware of at least scribe and transcribe at this time. The last thing I wanted to talk to you about is waiving. This is a big conversation right now about waiving state assessments. You really do have to actually look into your state and what they require for their state assessments. I know here in Pennsylvania, you can actually waive assessments when you, for religious purposes. Now you can take that as whatever you would like, but there are also other states that may be able to um, waive it because of your son or daughter's disability. 
However, here in the state of Pennsylvania, we also have an alternative assessment called PASA. So if you want more information about that, I would consider talking into the state of education or actually your school district. For right now, that's it for section four for state and local assessments of your students IEP. And I'm Bridget with Life on Spectrum. Thanks for watching that episode. And make sure you come back and join us again for upcoming videos. They'll be uploaded almost on a daily basis. Also, if you really enjoyed us, like us below or even make leave a comment for us to respond back to. And if for, if for all of you that are really involved in the Life on Spectrum, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. We appreciate you. We hope that this is worthwhile for you. And we'll see you next time on Life on Spectrum.